Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning and time for us not only Sunday school lesson, but time for church. Time to hear some teaching of the word and the preaching of the word. And if we, if we can talk him into it, we might even get Larry to do a song and dance. <laughs> I doubt that, there, doubt that very seriously. Oh, really? Does he have two left feet? <laughs> well, it, it is Mother's Day, so I think that honor should go to the the oh, okay. that, oh yeah no i'm not gonna do a happy dance either we'll, no we'll, we'll let you and, you and carol do the happy dance how about that yeah. Yeah. well we do want to wish everybody happy mother's day especially the mommies that can't be home that are serving the country amen amen for sure for sure mm -hmm. uh the just uh on, on the vein of all of that you know it's uh uh we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for mommies not a one mm -hmm. of us 
not a one of them. Mm -mm. Daddy's had something to do with it, but mommy's had a lot more to do with yep. it. And have you ever been in a store? I, you work at a big box store, okay? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a store you heard heard some child holler, Mama? Mm -hmm. How many women turn around and look? Yep. Yeah. I mean, yep. <laughs> it's a universal outcry for, I want my mommy and I want her now. Yeah, but have you noticed that every mommy recognized the cry? Their kid can be crying in a multitude of children and they can pick them out and find them and zero in on them like radar, mm -hmm. like a laser. You know, it's a, yeah, that's a, that's one of the unique things about the mommies. Yep. I get to go see my mommy this afternoon. She's fixing to be 84 years old. Her birthday is next week. You told her age mm -hmm. on television. We're proud of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We are proud of it. Is she proud of it? Mm -hmm. now, is she she can run circles around you, me, 10 times over. Uh, you were telling me she, she wanted a gazebo out in her backyard, so she just and built And she one. built one. How mm -hmm. long ago was that? Last summer. Last summer? Mm -hmm. She got more energy than me, you, <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> Carol, and <laughs> everybody <Larry> else. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so we're we're tickled. We're uh, we're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, like I said, it is Mother's Day, and... Uh, uh, you know, we there's a lot of women involved in our lives that uh, aren't, aren't they, Larry? Yeah. The, that uh, you know, whether they're our mother or not, they may be our sister or maybe our cousin or an aunt uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, or or even a neighbor or or family friend that had an instrumental part in in us becoming the person that we've become. That's right. Yes. So uh, on behalf of all the mothers and the and the stepmothers and the uh, adoptive mothers and all of them just uh happy mother's day and uh whether it's mother by osmosis mothers by birth or mothers by uh legal nature or illegal adoption or uh, just assumption uh, <laughs> they're still mamas yeah mothers by nature because a lot of mamas mama their community and everybody mm -hmm. else yeah. and i mean that's that's just what most women do is just take care of everybody well, you know, and, and here's a, a good example, and I hope people don't get offended at this, but if they do, they can just get offended. But you remember the little kitten that uh, uh, that I picked up from from living out in the wild behind the radio station over in Dalton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just just a little six-week-old little orange tabby kitten that uh, she had an attitude, and uh, she, she held her own amongst a, a family an entire uh, homeless village of cats mm -hmm. living in the woods behind the radio station. <laughs> and uh, so I, we brought her home and, and I guess she was uh, uh, close to a year old when Butterscotch showed up on our other kitten, mm -hmm. showed up on the front steps, meowing and crying. And she took that kitten under wing and adopted him and she, he became her baby. Mm -hmm. And to this day, three and three, oh, three and a half years later, mm -hmm. that cat will still that that kitten walks up to her and and starts playing with her like she's his mother, mm -hmm. and uh, he's almost as big as she is. But she'll one of the things that I've noticed that she'll do is when he gets real rambunctious and she's not in the mood for putting up with it. Mm -hmm. She'll he'll go over to her. She'll take her paw and wrap her paw around him and pull him down and hold him down until he goes to sleep. <laughs> Almost like saying, "Okay, son, it's time to settle down. Yeah. Mama needs to take a nap." Yeah. But she has become a mother to that. To to that, she adopted him. Mm -hmm. She became his mommy. And you know, there's a lot of women that have done the same thing. Absolutely. A, a child that was not theirs by birth, mm -hmm. but they became its mother. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, and and treated it with with such such motherly instinct absolutely and and there again we have the mothers in the church too yeah and that is one grace that god has given women to be able to love and nurture mm -hmm. i mean that's one of the women's jobs yeah. that god gave us it's, it's built into the nature and in that nature it doesn't have to be your own child you want to take care mm -hmm. of everybody you come across yeah and that's and that's wonderful that's uh, the way you send the send the program out especially to all the mommies mm -hmm. uh today oh i didn't even tell who you were i'm i'm rick talent pastor and host of the program and uh my two sidekicks here on this on the set larry and nancy gibson 
And uh, back in the control room, my beautiful, wonderful wife, Carol. And today she's joined by none other than uh, Chuck Bryant of uh, WOTG, I think is the call letters. I hope I got it right. Online radio and television. And uh, Chuck's uh, helping us out with some things and working a little bit around here, helping to bring us into the 21st century <laughs> of video and, and audio, you know? Yeah. One nice thing about this internet video is you don't have to keep a transmitter operating. True. That's just one less piece mm -hmm. of equipment to have to deal with, isn't it, Larry? Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, anyway, talking to a friend of mine who's a broadcast engineer, and uh, we, we were trying to get together to talk some on the phone. He said, I can't today. I've got one of these Harris Z series transmitters that's giving me a fit. And uh, all I can do is do the sign of the cross over the phone and say, Lord, help him. Yeah. Because I've worked on that particular transmitter mm -hmm. before, and it's, it's a nightmare. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, we're able to reach from right here around the world. Around the world. Anywhere that the Internet is available in the world, we're immediately there. You realize how long it took Trinity Broadcasting Network to have the availability of that entire reach and how many millions of dollars it took. Yeah. And here we're able to do it on a shoestring budget and uh, do it out of the basement of a church building. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yep. Changes in technology. We either embrace them or they embrace us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and if you don't believe that, just take your cell phone and lock it up at the house for a week. <laughs> You'll feel like you've lost your brain yep. more than likely. Hey, this morning's Sunday school lesson is on freedom for the future. Coming from the book of Romans chapter eight, one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible. It is a chapter that says so much about the word of God. And uh, we were talking about it before the program. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the call for freedom. To have freedom in the future, you've got to obtain freedom or attain freedom now. Mm hmm. How do you attain freedom now to have freedom in the future? Mm -hmm. I think uh, historically, what I'm reminded of is Scotland. Yes. <clears throat> Before we had the Declaration of Independence here, they had the Declaration of Arbroath, which our Declaration of Independence was kind of based on mm -hmm. in that and, and that the fact they both countries wanted to be free from England. The Declaration of Arbroath states, as long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never will we on any conditions be brought under English rule. It is in truth, not for glory, nor riches, nor honors that we are fighting, but for freedom and for that alone, which no honest man gives up, but with life itself. Mm. And what, what I'm reminded of when I think of freedom is that scene from uh, uh, Mel Gibson's movie. Help me out here. I forgot the name of the movie. Braveheart. Braveheart. Mm -hmm. where, where he stands up and he just screams at the top of his voice. Yeah. Freedom! Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's that passion. That passion for freedom. And, and that's what we had in 1776. Exactly. That's what scotland had mm -hmm. uh, when they when they decided they were not going to be ruled by england anymore in fact many of our founding fathers were not only born in england but a lot of them were born in scotland and a lot of them settled in the mountain southern appalachian mountains they welcomed the the opportunity to fight against england once again too yeah mm -hmm. some people just looking for a place to start a fight ain't they mm -hmm. <laughs> that sound like christians to me we're just you know, <laughs> If the devil wants to start something, we'll be glad to finish it. You know, yep. our, our, our commander in chief, uh, when he started something with our commander in chief, guess mm -hmm. what? Jesus finished it. Amen. And I still, they, I haven't found it in scripture and no theologian has ever agreed with me on this, but I still believe that when the stone rolled away on Easter Sunday morning, on resurrection Sunday morning, it rolled over the devil's foot and crippled him permanently. <laughs> That's my opinion. I'm going to stick with it. And there again, it is strictly an opinion. There's no, there's no, uh, no scripture no reference for that. that yes. Okay. <laughs> That's my opinion. Because he's been crippled ever since. Because everything that happened, that Satan wanted to do to bind people, to destroy people, to take away their freedom mm -hmm. was broken 
Yes. When Jesus arose from the dead, not when he finished on the cross. Oh, no. But when he arose from the dead, because mm -hmm. at that point, he took power over death, hell, and the grave. Yep. And how was it the apostle Paul put it in Corinthians? Help me out, Nancy. Grave, where is thy victory? Uh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, grave, where is thy victory? victory? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is none. No. Now, for those who are not born again, there is no hope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that I don't, I don't, I can't even imagine how they go through life in the world that we live in, not knowing Jesus and having that hope. It oh. has to be borderline nightmare just to get up in the mornings. Well, I can tell you how, because I have dealt with it ministering in the inner city. I've dealt with it ministering on Society Hill. As the uh, as Mike Warnke, the Christian comedian, said many years ago, he said, "Pig slop is pig slop, whether it comes out with silver spoon or on broken piece of pottery." Mm -hmm. You know, drugs, alcohol, and every other addiction that you can think of, because trying to hide from the inevitability that life is incomplete without God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have to take something like that. Just, I mean. It the amazing comfort that Christians have knowing Jesus. You can, I, I've seen memes where it shows an individual, whoever that individual is, that everything has is on fire and blowing up all the way around them, and they're just standing there like nothing's going on. And that's how I envision Christians mm -hmm. in this world that has fallen apart. I mean, it's like we know what's coming. We know who wins and we know where we're going. So we don't have to worry about all this. Mm -hmm. We do have to stand up for what we believe in and fight what, for what we believe in now. But we know when life is done, we will join Jesus. When this is finished, mm -hmm. when uh -huh. this part of, of, of our life, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> when this part of our life is finished, then we start the next part of our life. Mm hmm. And the Bible says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, does that mean we're going to spend the rest of eternity in heaven? I don't know. All I know is this. It will always be in the presence of God. Absolutely. Now, right. who knows? He might decide to, after he burns this place up, he might decide to re-inhabit it and say, okay, let's go take over earth again. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you one thing. We are not going to be angels sitting on clouds plucking harps. Nope. It is, it is going to be more exciting and more exhilarating than anybody could believe mm -hmm. in their finite brains. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that Jesus became, came to earth and became a little lesser than the angels. Mm -hmm. Okay? He became a man. Mm-hmm. And, and these people say, well, God needed an angel, so they took this person. Oh. That is mm. that is such hogwash. I'm going to call it what it is. It's such hogwash. The Bible doesn't say that. People do not become angels in heaven. Mm -mm. Nope. In fact, we, we have a standing that's so different from the angels that the angels cannot even perceive or understand. Yeah, scripture what says that they... and that's what scripture tells us you know and who are the demons they're the de they're the angels that 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 fought against the will of god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that rebelled against god and who are the demons mm -hmm. they're cast out angels who have no hope of salvation right so why would we want to become an angel and go go to heaven and become an angel that's right i'll, I'll be honest with you i'd rather show up as me mm -hmm. because then i can testify Absolutely. Uh, you know, the song that we use on the uh, daily program for a long, can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, listen, I got something to say. I got something to tell you about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My life was all messed up. And, 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 and then Jesus, mm -hmm. the one who's sitting on the throne did this. Mm -hmm. He came on the scene and my life was never the same. How many drug addicts, how many cripples, how many, how many people that their life was so bound by sin? And I mean, we're talking bound with handcuffs and shackles by sin. And when Jesus came on the scene, mm -hmm. they found freedom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, and, and uh, that's what we'll spend eternity talking about. Oh, absolutely. And it will never grow old. I can imagine sitting along the Crystal River. Mm -hmm. Sharing stories. Oh, there's so many saints of God I want to talk to. And with eternity, you could sit there and hear their stories from birth on. So many saints that I would love to hear about their lives. And, 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 and hang out with folks that, that you've known here that have made it to the other side. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mention a few of them. Hang out with my buddies like Roosevelt Henry, mm -hmm. like Larry mm -hmm. Moe, mm -hmm. R.W. Shambach, Brother Clint Bivin, you know, guys that they fought. They fought with everything that they had mm -hmm. to see others come to know Jesus. And the stories that they have of where God, what God brought them to and what he brought them through. Yeah, I don't think people realize how many people have suffered and died for the gospel, fighting for the gospel. Yeah. We wouldn't have the scripture that we have. Well, had it not been for men who gave their lives for us to have a translation that we can read in our language. And, and from what I have read recently, there have been more, there were more martyrs in the 20th century than what there were in the first 19 centuries of the Christian faith. Yes, there have and been. And yet we, we sit around and think, oh, well, it's not the way it was. No, it's not the way it was. It's worse. Absolutely. We are in a position to where we don't see it every day. I do believe that will change. But people need to know that persecution is happening all around the world. And being a Christian sometimes is not easy, but it's worth it. That's what the scripture is talking about, where um, no matter what we go through, no matter what we suffer, the glory of the future overshadows mm -hmm. anything that we could go through now. And it makes life worth living the prize yes the prize mm -hmm. you know the 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 prize does not go to those who who don't run the race right the prize goes to those who run the race and complete the race yeah if not you, everybody's a winner if you drop out halfway through the race you don't win the prize right but if you finish the race there's a prize mm -hmm. okay and uh, the you know, our, we are to strive to finish the race with everything that we've got. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I guess, Larry, that's the reason why you and I are looking at changes in our, our lives. Yes. Is because we have spent so many years working mm -hmm. for a living. Yeah. And doing ministry when we could, mm -hmm. when time allowed it. And now we're at that point in our lives that those, years in our lives where you know what it's time to pack something up and ship it off yeah you get to the point where it's time to stop working for the man and start working for god yeah the man the man <laughs> amen and uh, i guess that's something that you and i have dealt with over the last couple of years is yeah talking about this and thinking mm -hmm. about this and and uh you know it's uh it's it's a it's a strong decision that because you're looking at changing your entire lifestyle yeah i walked away from a major major job with a major corporation making extremely good money because i didn't feel like i could continue to walk as a christian and be employed in with that company because of the demands that were on my life mm -hmm. there was no time for ministry you know, there is business and then there's the father's business. And what was it that Jesus said to his mother when she found him? Yes, absolutely. That didn't you know, you know I must be, be about, about my father's, father's business. business. Yep. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Kenny Kenny Henson back years ago wrote a gospel song that has been down in my spirit for at least 40 years that I know of. Mm -hmm. And it says, I didn't come to hear the crowds roar with laughter. No, when I came, I chose a different route. I don't know what you came here after, but I came to see a soul saved. Now, ain't that what it's all about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that is what it's all about, folks. It's about seeing souls saved and lives changed. That's what the message today is all about. Mm -hmm. Freedom. Freedom. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge Sister Nancy on this a little bit. You know, she, she didn't know this was going to happen. But I'm going to challenge you, Nancy, besides the program that you're wanting to put together, mm -hmm. teaching, I'm going to challenge you to take this Sunday school lesson from this international Sunday school lesson and teach it in front of the camera. Okay. I want to challenge you to do that and start a weekly teaching of you teaching this Sunday school lesson. Now I'm going to start teaching the evangelical Sunday school lesson. This one's the international Sunday school lesson. This one's more the ecumenical Sunday school lesson. The one that I'll be teaching is going to be from the pathway press mm -hmm. ev evangelical uh, study, which is different. Yeah. They're, they don't even cover the same subjects. Right. They don't even have the same series. So we can do two or three Sunday school series. At the yeah. Same well, time. I, I love this program. I love, I, I love this Sunday school lesson. Um, it speaks my language. Do you, do you have the, uh, the website information handy there? I, I know I've got it at, at, in my office at the house. I don't think I have. It I don't but, think so. Uh, it's we, we pull this up, this Sunday school lesson, we pull up from a website of a church down in Atlanta. And if you uh, watched my, uh, man in the morning a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this this church and this pastor who uh, uh, and the, the church is now. Called, OK, the website for finding these Sunday school lessons, I'm going to tell it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's www.firstg.org. Firstg.org. First, .org. first that, as in the word, huh? word, the word first. First, F-I-R-S-T-G dot O-R-G. Yeah. And that's where we 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 find our printout of the of the weekly Sunday school commentary and uh they have a a vast array of uh going back what what was it five ten or fifteen years several in, years of of, yeah. of the Sunday school lessons on an archive there and folks let me tell you uh write that down first G F I R S T G dot org and uh, you can pull up the same information that we use for the, our, our Sunday school commentary here and follow right along. And, yep. And it would be good. It would be good if uh, doing the Sunday school lesson for them to be able to see the same information. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's very, very thorough. I, I, I love the fact that it is as thorough as it is. It is. It is very thorough. Whoever, whoever does this does a very good job of it. And, and I'm 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 impressed, you know. And here again, I, I challenge Nancy like this because Nancy, uh, your background is from a Presbyterian college, mm -hmm. I believe, and also with Methodist background. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. I I don't make any bones about it. I'm I'm a Southern Baptist turned Pentecostal. I call myself a Baptistcostal. Mm -hmm. uh, so we come from different viewpoints mm -hmm. on Scripture, but so much of what we believe doesn't differ oh no no not at all just vocabulary you're right but there's also the thing that we need the vast array of teaching absolutely because there are everybody learns in different ways and in uh, like some people are hands-on some people are auditory there are different ways to learn but there's also different y'all would know the word better than I am. Is it like linguistics or languages that just a, a manner of speaking? So many times it's semantics. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it is doctrinal differences, but sometimes it's semantics. But if we, if we hear from several viewpoints, you know, when I, I trained as an investigator, mm -hmm. uh, took course, took, went to school to be an investigator several years ago, I would look at doing a career change. And mm -hmm. that wasn't what the Lord wanted me to do, but, in, in taking the course, the college course in investigations, I learned a few things. Mm -hmm. and, one, and some of those things I use in my biblical studies. Right. Okay. And one of the things I learned is, is that when you are doing an investigation, you will have a number of different witnesses mm -hmm. to whatever happened to the incident. And you have to interview each one of those witnesses and get their perspective. Because amongst all the crowd of witnesses, mm -hmm. does that sound like a scripture there? Yeah. Uh, amongst all the crowd of witnesses, 
you can find the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees it from their own side. You can only describe the side that you see. Um, and your own, not only your own perspective, your own side and your own perspective, but maybe even your own biases. Right. That's true. That is very true. But like in, in my instance, although I love scripture and I read it, I'm very particular about the translations I use because I can't read New King James. I can't read King James version. I can read the New King James and understand it. But there are people like me who need it in their language. Mm -hmm. And that 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 is what this particular um, Bible uh, Sunday school class is in my language. I understand it better. And there are people that speak and understand other mm -hmm. translations better. I, I remember I was a senior in high school and uh, my uh, we were studying English grammar. I mean, English literature. And of course, that was Shakespeare. And mm -hmm. of course, you're a Shakespeare yeah. scholar. And uh, you can appreciate <laughs> this. But my, my English teacher, in front of the entire class, one day she said, Richard. She always addressed me that way. Richard. Mm -hmm. you, you remember these English teachers, very prim and proper? Yeah. Richard. Yes, ma'am. You preach from the King James Bible, correct? Yes, ma'am. I know that because I've listened to you several times. I didn't know she'd ever heard me preach, okay? Uh -huh. She snuck in and listened. <clears throat> she said, it is the same language as Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is it that you have such difficulty understanding Shakespeare? <laughs> oh, no. And you do not have any difficulty understanding the King James Bible. And it had to be the Lord that set me up for this. <laughs> I immediately just answered that anointing. <laughs> and the whole class just busted out laughing because that was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she, and she just laughed and said, touche. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, there's, there's people that, that have a hard time understanding the King James. Uh, there's people that have a hard time understanding the English. Right. Uh, it, whatever, which which is the best Bible for you to use? The one that you will read. Right. But that goes back to our theme today is the freedom to do so. Yeah. There are so many people in this world that would give their right arm to have scripture and be able to read it. And we in this country take it so for granted and out of all the books that we have are the bibles are the ones that collect the most dust in this country Ooh, when preaching on rambling now, hey. <laughs> when we have the opportunity to read and understand god's word and we don't take advantage of that i can understand why god would be very angry with this country on that alone so we do have the freedom to read scripture. We do have the freedom to study scripture. And if they want to join me, we can work on understanding scripture together. Yeah. And uh, you know what? There's there's enough. There's pro what are there uh, four or five different companies that publish uh, Sunday school literature mm -hmm. and they all have their own schedule for what they're teaching. You know? mm -hmm. So so there's there's room for four or five different Sunday school oh, lessons absolutely. to be taught every week absolutely. by four or five different people. Mm -hmm. and, and see, this is what, folks, this is what we're talking about doing is, is from right here, having a television feed on the Internet mm -hmm. that has a, a, a various, a broad spectrum of, of Bible teaching. Uh, Brother, Brother Chuck is, is from Church of the Brethren. Mm -hmm. OK, he sees things in a different perspective than I do and that you do. Mm -hmm. And but. We turn Brother Chuck loose, sitting behind his desk teaching. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? His perspective on that same lesson is going to be different than mine or yours mm -hmm. or Larry's. And it will draw more people to view the programming mm -hmm. so that we're able to reach more people. This is called the freedom of the press, right? Mm -hmm. You know, one of our freedoms, freedom. And, and, and getting back onto the subject, freedom, that's the cry of people. Mm -hmm. 
there, there's people all over the world that are crying out for freedom and they don't have it. What would they pay to attain freedom, to obtain freedom? Mm -hmm. What would they be willing to pay? You're a historian. Mm -hmm. What what about the people of, of Russia under the uh, under the old Politburo and the uh, Russian communist, hardcore Russian communist? Mm -hmm. What would those people do to have freedom? They would give their life. And yet, in America, we won't give 20 minutes. No, we we are so spoiled. And we don't understand the fight that our ancestors went through to be at this point. And we treat it like it's nothing. In this that, country, we treat freedom of religion like it's freedom from it. Absolutely. In fact, there is a group that calls, that, that declares himself that the, that the Constitution actually says freedom from religion, and it does not. No. It is freedom of religion. Yeah. And and so, you know, in, in studying the Word of God, all the way through the book, we find people seeking for freedom from sin, mm -hmm. freedom from bondage, freedom from oppression, no matter what, how far back it started with Adam and Eve. Yes. As soon as, as they partook of the forbidden fruit, and were deceived by Satan. You know that that's when the quest for freedom started. Right, and in our lesson, it also talks about how even the planet, the animals, and the plants, all grown for that freedom. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because that is, I, for years, I've preached the message on that very scripture in the Book of Romans. And in, in, in studying and researching that scripture, there's something that I that that came across my mind. And it, it talks about just like a woman in travail having a baby. Mm -hmm. OK, do you realize that the reason why and, and Cecil B. DeMille did such a wonderful job portraying this in the movie, in the movies. When Jesus died, gave up the ghost. It says that the sun went dark at noonday. Mm -hmm. It says that there were earthquakes and there were violent storms yeah. that no one could predict. <clears throat> no one could understand how it happened. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, this scripture tells it. Mm -hmm. The birth pains mm -hmm. until the breaking of the power of sin. That's mm -hmm. what that was, was the breaking of the power of sin. That's why the sun went dark. That's why there were earthquakes. That's that that's why the graves were opened. Mm -hmm. That's why you know that that's why the storms they don't have storms like that mm. in, in Israel, but yet they did. Why? How did it happen? It all happened because the power of sin over all creation had grown and grown to a point to a breaking point to where everything came to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And the breaking of the power of sin literally manifested itself in a physical form of mm -hmm. earthquakes and storms and mm -hmm. the sun going dark at noonday. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about that. No one else can say, well, our religion was born in a situation where all of creation just about came apart and the, and the universe almost imploded because of the power of our Messiah. We can say that. Mm -hmm. We can say that. No one else can. Yeah. And when you think about that, what happens in a person's life when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Those chains are broken. And even if the Christian at that, of course, at that moment, they realize the difference that has happened in their lives. Uh -huh. It's an instantaneous change, <clears throat> but they will see as time goes on, the freedom that they have gained against sin. Not only does it, do they suffer through um, sin at, as a non-Christian, they can see through the working of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the freedom that they have to change 
what they didn't think they could ever change. I could appearing in my mind as you were speaking, the the hymn My Hope is Built. He breaks the power of cancel sin. He sets the prisoner free. He is music to the sinner's ears. He is life and health and peace. Powerful words. Absolutely. And at one time, even before we became Christians, we did not have that power. We did not have the strength to change hmm. from our sin. Mm -hmm. It was inbred. And when God broke those change, uh, chains and gave you the ability to not sin, although we are human and we make mistakes and do sin, we do not have to anymore. We're not bound by it. Right. We're no we're no longer we're no longer in in a prison environment mm -hmm. paying the price for our failures for our sins right yeah. but we're we're in an environment where where there is grace mm -hmm. and forgiveness and like we talked about last week I believe it was you know that should we continue in sin that grace may abound no 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 don't continue in it get away from it deliver yourself from it as much as you can but remember that the true delivering power of the holy spirit by the shed blood of jesus christ is what sets us free from sin mm -hmm. and gives us freedom to look to the future and say hey i don't have to live that way ever again that's right and that's where sanctif sanctification comes in it's a lifelong process yeah. you learn the things when you are a non-Christian that you really want to shed and get rid of. Mm -hmm. Sanctification gives you the ability to learn how to do things God what God's ways, mm -hmm. to um, want to glorify God instead of glorify yourself. And God puts you in positions and situations in your life to teach you those lessons. And the scripture is the one that you fall back on in those lessons because he's always already given you the how-tos. It's just the actually reading it and learning it. And as we grow as Christians and mature in our faith, Things that happen in the world, like today, the things going on, do not have the impact that they would have had had we not been broken free of the devil's chains. Well, and, and it's it's threefold, just like with everything. And, and I've had people argue with me that do not believe in the Trinity. Mm -hmm. I'm Trinitarian. I believe in the Trinity, mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. As a scientist, I can I can look all through science and see the three. The, the, the Trinity proven time and time and time and time again in, mm -hmm. in, in, in creation. But that sanctification process is not only a, a spiritual experience, but it is a physical experience mm -hmm. and it is a mental experience. Absolutely. Thereby Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the cleansing of the mind by the renewing of the word. The, the cleansing of the spirit by by not doing those things and and cleaning your body up your physical body delivering your physical body from those things that that would attach you to sin mm -hmm. and but the spiritual sanctification and I believe I believe we go through that not only with an instantaneous thing at salvation but also with instantaneous things that happen throughout our life oh, as well yes. as a continuing thing so sanctification is not just a one-time process absolutely not it's not just an ongoing process but it is it is both those and a continuing episode mm -hmm. episodic event people will sacrifice everything to have peace mm -hmm. people will sacrifice everything to have freedom but the bible tells us how to have it mm -hmm. isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 this way it says you will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you mm -hmm. the words of isaiah the perfect peace he will keep us in perfect peace the peace that passes all understanding people uh, if you're not saved you can't understand this peace you can't understand the freedom 
no man you can't understand the scripture either god opens your mind when he saves you you can't rationalize the truth because you are of your father the father of lies once god breaks those chains and opens the truth to you then it is visible to you it becomes reality right and, and, and it's just like the scripture that we've gone over so many times and i'm and i'm constantly referring to it on man in the morning and 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 that is that that uh, that god gives us the freedom and that freedom is he sets us free from ourselves he sets us free from sin he sets us free from the power of sin. Mm -hmm. He sets us free from all of it. Mm -hmm. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Mm -hmm. We're free, free at last. last. Thanks to the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. We can't ever be the same. No. We cannot go back mm -hmm. to being that way and, 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 and be happy. No. We may have been happy at one time in sin, but, or thought we were. Yeah. But the problem is, once you've tasted the good things of God, mm -hmm. you cannot return. No, nope. you can't go back. Mm -mm. It's, it's like I was I heard a story here a while back from a fellow. He said, I used to really love going to the bars. And he said, I love drinking my beer. And he said, I love hanging out with my buddies at the bar. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get into a bunch of bunch of trouble or do a bunch of bad things. But I just loved it. He said, then I got saved. He said, a few weeks later, I, one of my buddies called me and said, hey, man, why don't you meet us down at the bar? Kind of him hauled around and said, okay, he would. He walked in. He said, it was like I was an alien in a foreign country. Mm -hmm. He said, the first thought that came to my mind was, what am I doing here? Yeah. This is not my place to be anymore. Yeah. He said he stayed a few minutes, talked with his friends, and then left. And they called him and said, hey. Why don't you come out? No, can't do that. Why not? You become religious? Honestly? He said, no. He said, I just, it. I'm not at home there anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable there anymore. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? We've, we've gone there for years. He said, just not living that way anymore. And see, that's that delivering power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, in that delivering power of the Holy Spirit, I know I've talked about it before, but um i used to be a smoker from my early youth thinking i would look like an adult but anyway you from, was cool huh? yeah for many 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 eons and that is one thing that my lord and savior delivered me from instantaneously it was i i know a lot of people that try to quit smoking and i'm not saying this is anything bad about them that is their life between them and their and, and god but with me smoking was my god to put it quite simply and when god saved me from that it wasn't a gradual having to quit it was a gradual wanting to serve the true god and not wanting to serve the god that i thought i had and that is a, one of those many blessings that comes with the freedom that God gives you. We have the freedom to be who we really are. Mm -hmm. And who we have become many times is not who we really are, but the, the person that the world has influenced to become someone. Mm -hmm. Uh there's a Larry that I've been in broadcasting for many years. We know people in broadcasting that when they walk into the control room, their whole persona changes mm -hmm. outside the control room. They're a totally different person, but when they sit by sit behind that mic or they get behind this uh, or get on a set or, mm -hmm. or sit behind the mic, man, the, the, the person that they really are inside. No, mm -hmm. the person, that they're pretending to be comes out mm -hmm. the person they're pretending to be and who they really are is who they are away from that environment 
you take away, take someone away from the environment that they have been in that has that has been conducive to sin and a sinful lifestyle, mm -hmm. and you put them in a place where they don't have to deal with that anymore. And what's going to happen? First of all, it's going to be culture shock. Mm -hmm. It's going to be societal shock. Mm -hmm. But after a while, it's going to become their lifestyle. Right. Have, have you noticed with people who you know that have gotten saved after you begin to know them, how it's like their blinders are removed. Mm -hmm. Everything that they thought they knew was a lie. And God took those blinders from their eyes and they were able to see their life for what it really, the ugliness that it really was. And now having the ability to get out of that muck and live life for God is just so refreshing and so and so comforting and then you look back and you're like what was i thinking how could i have thought that where did that come from you know reminds me of a country song and I, I, you larry you probably know mm -hmm. know the song i'm thinking about but you know the young boy takes off with the guys with the guy's daughter and and he's and he's uh uh, uh she's running away from home with him to to go with him and uh, and her daddy's uh, there with his shotgun shooting. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Yes, you know I mean. that 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 line just. Yeah. Like, what was I thinking? You know, yeah. of all the girls he could date, <laughs> this daddy has a shotgun and is willing to use it. You yeah. Know? What was I thinking? My, my life was such a screwed up mess. Looking back on it, but You're I right. thought I was happy. I thought I was man. I thought I was having a blast. Mm -hmm. I thought I was Mr. Cool. You know, just like you said mm -hmm. with the cigarette. She thought she was Ms. Cool, but mm -hmm. you didn't even have to smoke cool to do it did no you? yeah but but then you then you get to the other side of the cross mm -hmm. and and you're walking with god and you're living with god living for god and 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 your whole lifestyle has changed and you look back and say who was that idiot yeah exactly mm -hmm. who was that idiot mm -hmm. and and the folks if you're one of those idiots you know trust me they the life the other side of the cross is far better because there's freedom Yes, there's peace that passes all understanding. You can't, you can't understand this, can you, Larry? Mm. It, it's just like when we walked into a radio station for the first time and sat down behind the microphone. What yeah. happened? Our lives well, are never going to be the same no, again. Absolutely not. There was a transformation there. That it's a magical transformation. You become somebody else. Yeah, and and, and how many people? When they get behind a microphone and become somebody else, even change their name. That's true. Or change their voice. Yeah. Every time this guy sits behind the microphone, his voice changes. So you <laughs> ask him a question. <laughs> my voice just changed. Yes. I get into my radio voice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he just enunciates all you do. <laughs> but it but it's but it's a whole yeah. different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's a whole change, it's a change from inside out mm -hmm. and yes. uh and the lord does a total flip on your life mm -hmm. and 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 the funny part about it is about halfway through the flip you realize what just happened mm -hmm. and even the lord has changed people's names that's right the apostle uh paul his name originally was saul right and simon who became peter that's right mm -hmm. and what about uh, uh in the old testament uh abram became abraham right you know, folks, God will change you and he will change your name. He he will change everything about you if you let him. And and the, here's the thing. You may be sitting there saying, yeah, but I don't want to change. Yeah, you do. If you were happy living a worldly life, if you were happy just going about things the way they are, if you were happy with all the things that have you bound up, you wouldn't be listening to the to a to a preacher, would they? No. Wouldn't be willing to listen to a preacher because you wouldn't have any reason to. But you're looking for something. You're looking for something that's going to set you free. You're looking for something that's going to change your life. Because mm -hmm. the way you're living just 
isn't cutting it anymore. You're tired of it. You're tired of it. You're tired of being bound by that alcohol or drugs or whatever else it is. You may not use drugs. You may not be on out and may, may not drink. You may be a teetotaler. You may not smoke. You may not cuss. You may, you may, you may be the perfect person. But there's something there that's missing. And what's missing, I can tell you right now, is Jesus. What's missing is the freedom for the future. Not just the freedom for today, but the freedom for the future, for eternity. This is not a religious experience. This is a life-changing encounter with Almighty God that will make you the person that not only he wants you to be that he created you to be in jeremiah it says before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb i knew you and had plans for you established a plan for you god has a plan for your life and you'll never be happy until you're fulfilling that plan you may think that you are but you will never be happy until you fulfill God's plan for your life. And see, that's what it's all about. The one who knows what will be the ultimate best for us is the one who allowed his son to die on the cross, to suffer the shame, to suffer the abuse, and then to raise from the dead, resurrect from the dead, and take the power of death, hell, and the grave away from creation. We can preach, we can extend all the calls all we want to, but what it really comes down to is, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you tired of being bound up and wrapped up everything that's binding you and wrapping you up? Are you tired of life controlling you instead of you controlling your life? Because I'm here to tell you the answer is Jesus Christ. The answer is finding Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and letting the God of all creation change your life into what you will find is the greatest transformation that you can ever experience. I know people that they thought that they were totally happy, happy as could be, that there was nothing wrong in their lives, that everything was perfect in their lives. And then they came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And looking back, they realized, I was miserable. I was miserable. Folks, the truth is that without Jesus, you have no future. Without Jesus, the only future you can hope for is eternity in hell. Because there's only one way, one way to eternity with Almighty God. And that is through the Son, Jesus Christ. How about it today? How about it today? Are you ready to be free? Are you ready to be set free from yourself, from your past, be set free from sin? Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, I recognize that you are the God of all creation. And I recognize that you have, have created a scenario where I can be set free and delivered from everything that can control me in my life. Father, I need that freedom today. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I receive repentance, forgiveness of my sins. I repent of my sins and receive forgiveness. I receive deliverance. And I receive healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. You prayed that prayer with us this morning. You believe it sincerely in your heart you will experience what we're talking about. 
you'll be set free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Free indeed. There's nothing more. You pray with us this morning. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to be praying for you. Contact us at Rick Callis, P.O. Box 223, Lafayette, Georgia, 30728, or through whatever social social media uh, source that you're watching this program, whether it be YouTube or Facebook or Rumble or whatever other social media situation it is. But know this. We want to pray for you. We want to call your name out to Almighty God. We have prayer partners or prayer warriors waiting to pray for you. Because you succeeding at walking with God is the greatest thing that can ever happen in your life. And it is also the desire of our hearts. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Until next time, this is Rick Talent for all of us here at Grace Fellowship Church in Wolfhead, Georgia, saying go with God. Because he has already gone before you and prepared the way. He is your rear guard, and no matter what happens, he will always be right there by your side.